This is the story of the boy that baffled the king. You know what baffled means? It means it kind of shocked and stumped and he didn't know what to think. Baffled is like that. You don't know what to think. So, on this day, it was a nice sunny day and Gordy was loving his books. He had shelves and shelves of books. He spun around, pointed his finger up at the sky. Well, it was his ceiling, actually. Pointed his feeling at si bleh, pointed his finger at the ceiling, twirled around, and pointed at a book. This was his favorite game because he never knew which book he was going to be picking. And he had so many, sometimes he hadn't read some of them for years. He grabbed the book and it said, the boy that baffled the king, and he couldn't even remember what it was about. Gordy loved looking at the pictures, and he loved pretending that he was actually in the book, that he was one of the people in the book. So, as Gordy opened the book up, he decided that he wanted to be the boy that baffled the king. Gordy read, There once was a king who had hundreds of horses and hundreds of stables. But his workers were sloppy and lazy. They had let the stables get full of poo. Stables have to be cleaned out every day so when the horses, horses poo. Don't get sick and there's no room for the there was so much poo in the stables, the horses could hardly walk. They were sinking into it. Yucky. Ew. And it would have taken years to clean all that out unless you had a whole army of people in doing it. The king had a very important problem. He was supposed to use his horses for a grand parade only one month away. And he couldn't possibly do it when all his horses were in these pooey stables because they kept rolling in the stables and covering their fur with the poo. They looked like poo horses. It was horrible. <laughs> the king the said, The workers are supposed to be doing work. That's are yes, to be they were so lazy. They just thought, we'll just get paid to do nothing. The king never comes down here. He won't see. But when he did see, he fired them all and said, all of you, out. But he had a big problem on his hands still because there was a lot of poo in the stables. And the king couldn't clean it. The king he doesn't want to get his Yes, it would take him too long to clean all of that out. Now, here's what the king said to everyone in the land. Whoever can clean these stables out by uh, the beginning of the month. So that gives you 30 days by the beginning of the next month. will have my daughter to marry. So he was giving the princess away to marry the man who would clean out the stables. Now, there was a little boy, and he was sure he could do it. But the king wouldn't listen to him. He thought he was a lot of nonsense because he was only a little boy, and how could this little scrawny boy possibly clean out the stables when even the biggest, strongest men couldn't get it done that fast? Some men said, we can do it. We have tons of people. So he said, all right, do it. They started cleaning it out, but after one day of work, realized that there was no way even all of them working together could even come near to cleaning out all these filthy, pooey stables. Other men came, we'll do it, we'll do it. He let them try, and the same thing happened. After one day of hard work, they hardly made a dent at all, and they knew 30 days was not enough to get these stables cleaned. No one else came. Everyone else said it can't be done, and the king was going to have to give up his parade because of this. So the boy kept coming every day and said, I'll do it for you. And the king finally said, all right, do whatever you can. And he knew the boy wouldn't be able to do anything, because what could a little boy do? 
So the little boy had a wonderful plan how to get all the stables clean by this day. The king came out to check his work on day one. The boy wasn't anywhere to be seen and no stables had been cleaned at all. The day two, same thing. Day three, the boy was out digging um, a trench far away from the stables. What are you doing here digging this trench? You're supposed to be digging, cleaning out the stables. Oh, don't worry, I have lots of time to do that. Day after day, the king just decided finally to stop because he kept seeing the boy digging out in the field and not cleaning out the stables and he figured out oh, he's not gonna do anything. I just have to give up my parade. I have to try to think of another way. Now, when one day was left, suddenly the boy's plan got snapped into action. The boy had dug a huge trench all the way to the river, which was very nearby. And then finally he opened the trench to all the water and the water ran from the river all the way to the stables. Is this Fresh. Trench a little path? Yep, a, a trench is. A deep trail. Yeah, it's like a deep trail. Like a little stream. Yep. So he dug that out and tons of water swished and swirled around, washed and whished and whooshed through all the stables until it was completely clean. The little boy had just a few hours to go clean all the corners where the water couldn't get properly. He cleaned them out and the whole stables were shining. Then the boy took all the stones he had piled to the side of where he opened the trench and threw them all into the trench water to stop the river from going there again and turn the river back on to where it used to go. He went up to the king and said, okay, the trenches are, the stable's clean now. The king was shocked and he didn't believe the boy. He came down to the stable straight away to, to tell the boy what a liar he was. And he couldn't believe his eyes. There in front of him were all the stables completely cleaned out and all wet. How did you do this? He said. The boy said, well, I dug, a, I dug a trench to the river and I let the river do all the work for me. I couldn't have cleaned all that in 30 days. Even a whole army of men couldn't have cleaned that. So I let the river work for me. I just dug a trench to the river. The king was so shocked and amazed. And he thought, this boy is really clever and I definitely need him in my palace because when you're working um, for a whole kingdom and trying to make important decisions, you need cleverness and wisdom to know what to do. And the boy had both. He gave his daughter to the boy and they got married and lived in the palace with the king. And all together, they ruled over that land with wisdom and integrity. And that was the end of the Gordy story. Gordy thought that was the coolest story he'd ever read, and he loved stories that had clever things in it like that. Clever tricks that maybe someone wouldn't normally think of. Gordy prayed, Dear Lord, please let me be like that. Let me be clever and think of wise things, just like Solomon in the Bible was clever and thought of the wise things that you gave him to think. Please help me think that way. In Jesus' name, amen. Gordy was happy and he believed God would give him wisdom for little things throughout the day. And Gordy thought to himself, as I develop my wisdom and do good things and think of creative ways to do things, God will give me more wisdom for bigger problems. And that was the end of the story.